The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Thursday, April 13th, and um, our uh, epistle lesson, we're doing our epistle lesson on, on uh, the third day of the week this week because of the first reading being from Acts and, uh, and fitting well with the resurrection. So our epistle lesson for this week is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, and um, we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal, and uh, go ahead and get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you... Um, Oh, sorry. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you, you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, even though we have not seen you, you have granted us faith in you, and we pray that you would guard and keep that faith in us, that you would bless us with an ever-increasing faith and joy that in the in the resurrection um, and the forgiveness of sins that we have in you. Bless us as we hear your word, especially today, that we would... Um, that we would hear it and understand it and be drawn to um, drawn to you through it as you even have saved us and redeemed us that we would live with you as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so I think this is... Uh, you know, pretty obvious why this is, is connected with the gospel lesson. So the gospel lesson, if you recall, was Jesus appearing to the disciples and that first Easter and then um, in, in sending them and then you have Doubting Thomas and then you have John writing about how these things are written that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ. So, uh, you know, these this fits kind of with, with two parts of that. And, you know, we talked about the, the resurrection being proclaimed by... Um, by, by Peter and the other disciples yesterday, but here we've got um, well, we've got Peter again, I guess, right? Uh, Peter talking about the resurrection here. So he says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead." Uh, so this this language here of being born again, um, you know, we had that with, with baptism a few weeks ago with John chapter 3, uh, that you must be born again by water and the Spirit, right? So this is baptismal language. Think of, of Romans chapter 6, where, uh, where, where Paul talks about uh, being buried with him through baptism in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so there's death and resurrection, buried into his death, raised in his resurrection, we too walk in newness of life. He also also makes a connection then to uh, or, or, or to, to the, the imperishable seed, right? And you can see this in verse 23 of, of chapter 1 there. Since you have been born again, there it is again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God, right? The word bringing that, that new birth to us, that faith, right? I mean, that's what it, this is. This is the new birth that we have in faith. We are... are um, we are born in this life uh, under sin, and in, in that un, with unbelief, and uh, and we're we're raised in faith. Really, oh, especially faith in in the resurrection of of Christ Himself, right? So, um, born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus, just as He has been raised, so we are also raised to an inheritance that is also imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven. 
for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, right? So this is, this is a, a, te- a temporary rejoicing because then we'll have the fullness of that joy. Um, so then you've been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, when we talked uh, about the, the, the preaching in Acts, um, Acts chapter 5, there was this this uh, blessing that they experienced in, in being persecuted, right? And and so it's a good reminder that when we endure trials, that this is that this is a blessing to us, right? Um, it's a testing of the genuineness of our faith. And uh, let me let me let me take a look at that that word here real quick, verse seven. Um, yeah, doki mazo zomenu. The, the, that's the that's the when you would test a, a coin, you would you would it, it would be the same idea. You would you would test it for its genuineness, right? You'd bite bite to see if it's gold, that kind of thing. Uh, this is. Um, Romans 12 is one I often think of that, you know, that um, then you can test and approve the, 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 the will of God, the good and gracious will. It's be, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Uh, then and only then can you be, uh, can, can you test and approve what the good and gracious will of God is, right? Uh, so, so as we are renewed in the mind, we can understand God's working better. As we are born again by the word, we can understand God's, God's testing us and the, the genuineness of our faith. And, and that's good. That, that faith is more precious than gold and, uh, and found to result in praise and glory and honor. So when, we, when our faith is being tested, um, seeing that genuineness, what a, what a blessing that, that comes to us through that. Uh, and then verse 8, and this is a, a clear connection to, to the story of Thomas, right? Um, Jesus says, uh, Thomas, you have seen and believed, and blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Verse 8, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So as you do not see him with the eyes uh, of your body, but with the eyes of faith, um, as you see him proclaimed to you, portrayed to you as crucified, as Paul says in, in Galatians, through his word, as he, he presents himself to you uh, with his body and blood in, with, and under the, 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 um, the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper, there is this, this presence of him with us and this joy that we have. Uh, that we are filled, filled with that faith, and, and in that faith is the, the salvation of our souls, the salvation of our lives. Um, to live with him forever. Thanks be to God. All right, um, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.